Hello, this is Super Saiyan 7 Cinders. Now, I know normally I stick to bringing deck builds, but uh, I want to talk about a move that Konami's made that, you know, I just, I can't understand why they would go this route. Um, they've recently gone, they've, in the OCG, they've reprinted some of the Forbidden cards but they've completely changed and restricted their effects. Um, we've got a list of them here. You've got Chaos Emperor Dragon, Ring of Destruction, Crush Card Virus, Temple of the Kings, Exchange of the Spirit, and Sinister Serpent. And they've completely gone in and re rewritten the effects. Um, it's not a simple changing of the words like most card erratas are. And um, these completely redo the effects, restrict the mo restrict the abilities of the card uh, drastically. And, and what I don't understand is is okay, so you want to bring out a card people are gonna play. You, why do it this way? You you've gone before in the past, and you've given us a new card. Like Black Luster Soldier, Envoy of the Evening, Twilight, which pays homage to the original monster, but does something different. So you want to give us a card like Chaos Emperor Dragon, Envoy of the End, then give us a new card that is similar, but different. Okay, you want to give us where it has a similar effect. But it's got these restrictions. Then, then do that. Make it more like the Twilight card. Give us a, a, a Chaos Emperor Dragon, Envoy of the Setting Sun, or, or Chaos Emperor Dragon, Envoy of the Morning Twilight, and, and give it the same same effect in terms of of how it banishes. Where Twilight banishes all lights or all darks from your graveyard when you have equal numbers. Go ahead and do something like that instead of keeping the same banishing effect. But then give it the. You can blow the field up, cross a thousand life points, no other effects can go off. I mean, and even as it is, the way you've, you, you, they've, they've redone the card. You're 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 almost screwing yourself over to play it. Okay, so I'm gonna pay a thousand life points, send every card in the field to the graveyard, in the hand, and then inflict a, a thousand or three hundred damage for each card. And then I don't get to activate any further effects. What about my opponent's monsters or, or cards that, that have an effect that go off when they get sent to the graveyard? Whether it's from the hand or from the field. Their effects get to go off. So, I mean, that's not helping the player using the card. That's hurting the player using the card. So, so I mean, th that's just not a good way to re redo the card to begin with. But then don't make it the same card. Make it a new card. And that's what I want to say with, with most of these is I've come up with new card names you can give it. You give it a little bit different art, similar art. Like Bless Light Cluster Soldier Envoy of the Beginning and Envoy of Enemy Twilight have similar art, but they're different art. Go and do something like that. Don't give us the same card but ruin it. Which is what you've done with all these all these cards here on this list. You've ruined them. They're not the same card. Don't call them the same card. So Ring of Destruction, the new Ring of Destruction, you activate. You can only activate one ring per turn. During your opponent's turn, you target one face-up monster your opponent controls, whose attack is lower than or equal to their life points. So you can't, you can't burn them out with with Ring of Destruction. You can only weaken their life. You can't defeat them with it with the card anymore. Uh, 
you do damage to yourself before you do damage to your opponent. So if you have less life than your opponent, or equal life to your opponent, well, especially if you have less life than the cards you just hit, you're going to die your before your opponent does. So it's no longer a tie. I mean, some of this I could I could deal with. You make ring, you can only activate the one ring per turn. Okay. You make it, you can only activate during your opponent's turn. Okay. What's the point of making it so you can't deck, uh, you can't end the duel with ring? That makes no sense to me. And the fact that you're likely, you're just as likely to kill yourself before killing your opponent with this card doesn't make any sense to me. My suggestion, and this would actually make the card more acceptable, more playable, turn your new version into a trap hole card. Give it homage to the original Ring of Destruction. Call it Destruction Ring Trap Hole. And then, you, then you've got the effects of, of uh, the Trap Tricks monsters can, can grab it or make use of Destruction Ring Trap Hole. And then it's okay if it only activates during your opponent's turn. It's okay if you can only use it once per turn. It, it's even okay if, if you've got this extra addition of you have to select a, a, a monster weaker than your opponent's life points. I mean, there's a lot of restrictions to the trap hole type cards already to begin with. So blend it in with the trap hole cards. Give homage to, tra to Ring of Destruction. But don't destroy the original Ring of Destruction's uh, abilities. Leave it a band card and, and let it have a, a, a kin card that's similar to it. Like, and like I said, if you, if you go and you make a trap hole card, there's going to be a lot of players interested in that because it's a trap hole card now. Um, and I'm actually going to make the same comment here with the next card. It, it's possible you could turn crush card into a trap hole card. Uh, I'm less excited about that idea as I would be with the regular destruction card but it could be done you make, you, you make it a, a virus infested trap hole or, or something along those lines and, and when they summon you activate it you tribute your dark monster and, and do the do the effects of, of this this new version or you, you just you've got multiple other virus cards out there already make Another virus card, plain and simple. Corroding card of virus, or disintegrating card virus. That pays homage in its name to the original crush card virus. But isn't replacing it. Well, I mean it is in a sense because it would be the playable version. But leave it, the, leave it its own card again. Don't change crush card virus. I mean, you've got a lot of younger players who, who maybe don't haven't got really experienced the play of, of these old cards. So I, I, I... But it's not the same. It's just not. Um, the next card. Temple of the Kings. It's another one of those cards that just... It hasn't seen play in a long time. And so... Okay. You, you want to make... A Temple of the Kings that's playable. How about making a card that's treated as Temple of the Kings, but its name is not actually Temple of the Kings? I mean, you've got several cards like that in existence. Cards that are treated as Umi. Cards that are treated as this or that or, or whatever. So make a Shrine of the Kings that is treated as Temple of the Kings and then has these effects that you can only activate one trap card you control during the turn this is turn it is set. Uh, you can send both this card and one face up mystical beast curse kit to the graveyard to special summon one monster from your hand deck or extra deck. Whatever. Um, but make it its own card that's treated as Temple of the Kings. Since you have to have Temple of Kings for this thing to work. But make it treated as Temple of Kings and then okay. You got a playable version of the card. And you still respect the original card.
you still respect the effects of the original cards. The next one is Exchange of the Spirit. The restrictions here is you can only activate one Exchange of the Spirit per duel. So no switching the deck and then switching it back around once you've played a little bit longer. Just you get to do it once. And yeah, there's a lot of decks that I've seen that play uh, traditional. And they, they really only use it once anyway. Uh, so that's not a big deal. Um, uh, I mean, it's really, this one's probably the least different, except for the fact, it's just the fact that it's each player, not just your, your opponent, has to have 15 or more cards, in the, or, or you have to have, whichever. Both of you have to have at least 15. And then you can only use it once per duel. This one's the least frustrating of all, of all these changes, change cards. But again, you, you make a sister card. Um, exchange of the imprisoned spirit. Or exchange of the living of the dead. Or swap of the spirits. Where you pay homage to the original card. And yet, don't change the original card. And the last one, Sinister Serpent. Honestly, what's the point of changing this card at all? It's not, as it as it originally stood, it's not any stronger than uh, other cards already out in the field, or out in the game, like Treeborn Frog. Uh, if you want to add, you can only use the effect of Sinister Serpent once per turn, or you can only spe bring... Uh, bring back from your grave one sinister serpent per turn or whatever I can I can understand that not changing in the wording to match treeborn frogs where a treeborn can only special summon one treeborn frog per turn basically I can understand that but the rest of it just not necessary I mean it's original is, is equivalent to treeborn frog or uh, a couple of the other one stars that use their effects over and over. I mean, kind of like this one. In fact, in my opinion, I would still call Sinister Serpent weaker than, say, Level Eater. I mean, Level Eater you gets abused, and yet it's not banned. I mean, you special you can special set that that card over and over go again. In the same turn. And it goes to the field. Where it can be. Sinker summoned. Uh, and maybe after. I mean it's. Or you let it sit. Or you. Exceed with it. But it gets to keep coming back. Multiple times in the same turn. You, you already couldn't do that. With Sinister Serpent. It's like you couldn't. You can't do that. With Treeborn Frog. Because they, these cards. Go off in the standby phase. They're only going to happen really once. I don't know of too many effects that go off in the standby phase where you get to send it back and bring it back again in the standby phase. So already, you're, you're at a disadvantage against another card that's already out in the game. That's a big meta card. And you've got to hit this card. So you can only be used once. During your standby phase, and then during your opponent's next end phase, banish Sister Serpent from your graveyard. I mean, that kills the kills the card anyway. It makes it completely useless. It's not going to come back. It's it's been banished. So how does that work? And if you want to do something like this, it should be, I mean, maybe even a completely different card. That gives you a one-time use of it, or something. Because that's really all this becomes, is a one-time use, and then it's, it's banished. Uh, so, so yeah, you can rename it, Resurrection Serpent, Slippery Serpent, something like that. But you're not even really giving justice to this card anymore. This card is just completely useless, almost. It, it's, 
maybe not as, as devastating a hit as what she did to, to Chaos Emperor. But Sinister Serpent could have come off the ban list as it was, be useful, but not be overpowering. I mean, so there wasn't even a need to hit this card. Um, that would be my suggestion, would be go in and, and fix the cards back and, and just make new cards with these with these errata changes, uh, with similar changes to them or whatever. Leave the original monsters alone. If you think they're too powerful to be banned, that's fine. Leave them banned. Make the new cards that are playable be different cards. That's the proper way to do it. And you know what? If, you're, if, if the whole idea was making money... Okay, so now I've got the knockoff Sinister Serpent that's, that's playable. And I can back and forth Sinister Serpent on and off the ban list. So that people buy it and sell it. And you can make a profit of it off of it that way. Uh, the same with, with some of these other cards. Okay, I can take off Crush Card for, for a ban list or two. And then put it back on. And you still have the other version out there working. Uh, same with Ring of Destruction. Okay, so you've got your, your second your knockoff Ring of Destruction. We'll bring Ring back for one for to one, and, and okay, you bring back to one. There's no need for activate one Ring of Destruction per turn, but you you can do that. And then you've given burn burn decks two cards to work with, but you take it back off again if if if, if it gets abused, and, and you can make money by having both, and not just your weakened Ring of Destruction. And the other options not there, but you make two options, and you've got a lot more flexibility in the game, a lot more income ability off the cards because you've now got two cards to deal with, not just one. Uh, that's kind of what I have to say about this. That's how I feel, and, and I can guarantee you, there's a lot of other older players who are going to feel very similar. Uh, maybe even some of the newer players who've at least have seen and read some of these original card effects are, are going to wonder, why are you changing them? Why are you making them so much less useful? Now, I understand these cards are still going to be playable. Uh, Ring of Destruction, uh, the, the new Crush card, Temple of the Kings, uh, Exchange of the Spirit. Yes, they're still playable. They'll, they'll, they'll get used. And I understand that. I made them a, 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 a playable version. But why make them a playable version of the same card when you, when you, you take a card that's got a history to it and you, and, you, and you erase that history. You erase all the memories. You damage the spirit of the game as well as the spirit of those cards by saying I'm going to take this card completely rewrite it and force it on the people instead of giving them a new card saying okay we're going to respect this old card escape stay banned or maybe we'll let it out once in a while but we want you wanted and we wanted to give you a playable version so we've created this new card to do just that. Please feel 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 free to respond, to critique, uh, to share uh, this video. Let me know what you think. If you think I'm off the mark with what they've done to these cards and what they may do to future cards like this. Because if they're going to do this now, they're going to start doing this to other cards. If, if they feel this is okay to do this with these cards, they will start doing it to other cards that we haven't seen in a long time that were just deemed too powerful to keep in play. They'll say, we, we got away with this the first time, we'll get away with it again. Should we tell uh, 
Konami how we really feel about what they've done with these cards. It, it, they should have how they should have treated what they did with these cards. Thank you for watching.